Everybody, what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by Jim Sonis of FanDuel. We're here to talk about the players whose stock is rising after an impressive week number seven. What's going on, Jim? I am all good, Greg. It was a pretty fun week seven slate of games. The problem is that a couple of these guys on this list are a result of injuries. That's never fun. Talk about guys uh, whose stock is up as a result of that. So a little bit of a bummer, but overall still some fun football on Sunday for sure. It was a really fun Sunday in Week 7, capped off by a phenomenal game between the Seattle Seahawks and the Arizona Cardinals. And it's kind of sad in that fantasy owners and experts were calling for Chase Edmonds since before Week 1, back during draft season. He was everybody's favorite stash because as much as people like Kenyon Drake, they love the idea of Chase Edmonds more. Well, Chase Edmonds' time has come, unfortunately, due to an injury to Kenyon Drake. And if the Cardinals are on a bye, so maybe he'll get healthy. But Chase Edmonds looked the part last night. It's what we've been waiting for all season long. He had 14 and a half fan duel points. And if this injury to Drake is as serious as it looked, Chase Edmonds is going to be the top ad on waiver wires in season long leagues and certainly someone in just a couple of weeks in DFS we're going to be targeting. Yeah, because if we get Chase Edmonds with no Kenyon Drake, he's kind of the prototype of what I want out of a running back, specifically because he gets targets. Like, it's not hard to figure out my prototype. That's my kind of running back I like in DFS. I want guys who will get targets, and there is no concern about that with Chase Edmonds. He actually has 14% of the Cardinals' targets this year, despite playing limited snaps. So if we get him out there for, you know, 70% of the snaps— that's going to be a really hefty number, which will give him a great floor and access to a tremendous ceiling. So Chase Edmonds, he's been great so far, could get more early down work. And I think that's more important in Arizona than a lot of places because Cliff Kingsbury has done a great job of scheming up their ground game. He doesn't get a lot of credit for that. It's mostly focused on Kyler Murray, but their ground game is creative and fun to watch. And I think that Edmonds can take advantage of that as he has shown on his limited attempts so far this year. So you give me efficient running plus targets in a good offense. I'm going to take that every time. So Chase Edmonds, the kind of running back I want, I would love for Kenyon Drake to be healthy because we want to see guys like that be on the field, be healthy, work through these injuries. But if he's not able to go, Chase Edmonds will be a guy we talk about on the hurry up in a positive sense from a DFS perspective in the not so distant future. The talent's always been there for Chase Edmonds. It's been the opportunity and the injuries. Now he's going to step into a major role. Whenever he's out on the field, he makes something happen. Last night, he did just that. And hopefully the injury to Kenyon Drake isn't too serious that both of these guys can excel. But right now, Chase Edmonds looks like a major ad and someone whose stock is clearly rising. Talking about backup running backs in the Sunday night football game, that brings us to the other side of the field, where Chris Carson has been having a fantastic season for the Seahawks. And Carlos Hyde was, well, kind of just there. Well, Hyde steps up to the plate now as the primary ball carrier for the Seattle Seahawks, a team that until this year just ran the ball too much. But we're letting Russ cook now, and that's also good for the running game and the targets, as you've always pointed out, for the running back behind them. And right now, with Chris Carson potentially out, that means more Carlos Hyde. Yeah, you hit all the points there, Greg. We're all good. I, we can just move on to the next point because you hit it. We got a running back in an offense led by Russell Wilson who will get targets? Like, sign me up, baby. Again, I'd, I'd rather have Chris Carson be healthy, but if we're not going to get Chris Carson healthy, at least we know that Carlos Hyde is going to be the kind of running back we like to target. In the second half, when Carson was out, we saw Hyde get 10 of 13 running back carries. He had three out of five targets for running backs. He had four total targets for the game. So what we have here again is a running back in a good offense who will get targets and get a lot of early down work. That's a lot of boxes to check. So again, I'd love for, for Chris Carson to be healthy because like you said, he's a very usable guy in daily fantasy. He's someone that we have talked about plenty on this show in the past. But if he can't go, I think we have a pretty good idea of the kind of workload Carlos Hyde's going to get. It's going to be good work. And it's not like Carlos Hyde has been dust. Like, he played well last year for Houston when he's gotten chances for Seattle this year. He's played pretty well, looked good on that, uh, that touchdown run last night. So... I do think that Carlos Hyde is someone deserving of our attention. He'd be the kind of running back we want to target. So hopefully Carson's okay. But if he's not, I think we should, should have a good level of confidence plugging Carlos Hyde into our lineups. Although maybe not nearly as young as Chase Edmonds and not, I guess, as clearly the guy as Chase Edmonds would be because DJ Dallas and Travis Homer are there in Seattle. Carlos Hyde was the one that took the reins in the second half last night and both catching the ball out of the backfield and running it He's going to be the man in Seattle. No bye week either this week for the Seahawks. So they're in position to have success. And that means Carlos Hyde 
if Car- Chris Carson is out, should be in your lineups this weekend. One final player whose stock is up, and I wasn't sure which direction you were going to go, which rookie quarterback you were going to choose here between Justin Herbert and Joe Burrow, who both had fantastic games this past Sunday. It was Herbert that had over 38 FanDuel points for the Chargers in their victory against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Herbert has burst onto the scene, and the crazy thing was, I saw this on Twitter today, would Tyrod Taylor still be the starter if he doesn't have that lung injury? Would they, Anthony Lynn, have put in Justin Herbert because I don't know that he would, and Herbert just looks so, so good. And so does Joe Burrow, for that matter. The rookie quarterback's having a fantastic season here thus far in 2020. And we finally get to watch Tua this Sunday, too. So this is going to be a fun little week of games for sure. But with Justin Herbert, we know he's been good. I don't need to tell you he's been good. He's been awesome. You can see that with your eyes. I want to talk about how much confidence they have in him in letting him throw. And I think that's the key thing for me because – the Chargers have a tendency to be a little bit too run heavy at times. Maybe this is because Austin Eckler's out and they don't want to lean on Joshua Kelly and Justin Jackson's being banged up. Maybe that's the reason, but in Sunday's game, Herbert threw 43 times. That is despite the fact they were leading by at least one score. They're leading by seven or more points for the entire fourth quarter. So that's really good volume for Justin Herbert. That's great for him because he's been tremendous in that volume. He doesn't need a lot of volume to go off. But it also means that we can have trust in his pass catchers and stack up Justin Herbert. We can pair him with Keenan Allen, who has a 32% target share in the games he's played with Mike Williams and Justin Herbert. We can go to Hunter Henry uh, if he's healthy because he's had 20% of the targets in those games. That makes me feel really good. I was worried that Herbert would be efficient, but he might not get the volume that we want. The volume has been there, and I think that's a really encouraging thing, especially when you pair it with the efficiency and the fact that Herbert is a good runner as well. So Herbert, right now at least, is checking every box from a a fantasy quarterback perspective, and he might be getting his right guard and his right tackle back pretty soon. Those are two really good players that he's been playing without, and it hasn't really mattered. So Herbert has been good, but he might get even a little bit better once those guys get back. I was not as high as everyone on Justin Herbert coming out of the draft because he ran a really weird horizontal offense in Oregon, but he showed that was a product of the offense, not a product of him with the way he has played so far. So I am okay buying fully into Justin Herbert. He has been tremendous, and the Chargers know it. I think that's a big thing for us, knowing we can expect them to throw the ball a good amount each week. Justin Herbert doesn't look like a rookie out there, and that's the best thing you can say for a young quarterback. When you're making the players around you better, well, it's just impressive, and the fantasy numbers are going to go up. When players like Jalen Guyton and Virgil Green are scoring touchdowns on a regular basis, something that's something to say about the quarterback. And Justin Herbert has proven, without Austin Eckler, he could be a dominant force, and that's what Herbert is right now. Justin Herbert, somebody we are banking on in the coming weeks in fantasy football. That's going to do it for us here on the FanDuel Hurry Up Gym. We appreciate the time. Good luck this week. Same to you, Greg. Looking forward to talking to you once again on Friday to talk about what looks like a pretty fun Week 8 slate as well. Absolutely. We'll get to Week 8 tomorrow as Tom Becky will join the program as we'll go over his top stars in DFS for this upcoming weekend. For Jim Sonis, I'm Greg Sussman. Thank you so much for watching. Enjoy Monday Night Football tonight, and we'll see you back here tomorrow for another edition of the FanDuel Hurry Up.